there are three ways that we can solve a system, either graphically or algebraically by substitution or elimination. If a question specifies that you have to solve algebraically, these are the only two methods that you have. If it doesn't specify, you can choose which one best fits the problem that you're given. If you're entering something into your calculator, if it's already given to you in the form of y equals, that's the easiest just to type in. Something where you're comparing, such as two trees growing at different rates, something like that, a graphing approach is probably the most efficient. Calculators can be a pain because of the window. So if you're not quickly sure how to adjust the window, or if you don't see any kind of a comparison or rate, sometimes it's better to solve algebraically. If you have a variable with a coefficient of one and you can use substitution to quickly solve for the other variable, or if you have coefficients where you can easily eliminate one variable, that would be the most appropriate method to use. In the first one, we have two people planting trees, and it gives us their rate. Now, as soon as I have a rate, I know that's going to be the slope of a graph. Look at the units, because it will often give you a hint as to what you're comparing. So here we can see we're comparing trees to minutes. Minutes is a unit of time. That's going to go on my x-axis if I sketch a graph. So I'm going to try to visualize what's happening and then get two equations that we can put together to make a system. Once we have our axes labeled, uh, notice that time is in minutes. So I just kind of for myself indicated that this is going to be 1130. If I put 1130 right here, that's the time that Sheila starts. So when she begins, she hasn't planted any trees. She's planting at a rate of three trees every two minutes. That becomes our slope. She's going to plant three trees in two minutes, up three trees in two minutes, and so on. Now, this is not drawn to scale. It's just to give us an idea as to what's happening. Now, Jeremy is planting trees at a rate of one per minute. So he's going to be planting one tree in one minute, one tree in one minute, one tree in one minute. He's not going to be planting quite as quickly, but he got a head start. So if this is 1130, this is 10 o'clock. Time is in minutes. One and a half hours is 90 minutes. So I know that by the time we get to our starting point here, Jeremy has already planted 90 trees. That's my y-intercept. So I can now graph those two equations and find the point of intersection to determine the time at which they planted the same number. Or if you want to set this up with 10 o'clock being at the origin, then this is going to be 1130. So now at 10 o'clock, this is Jeremy. Jeremy has not planted any trees yet. So our y-intercept is zero. He still is planting at the same rate. Sheila, however, is also planting at the same rate, but she is 135 trees behind Jeremy. So right now, if I were to take this line and extend it down here, she's going to have a y-intercept of negative 135. She has not yet begun, and this is at her rate. So in 90 minutes, at a rate of one and a half trees per minute, if we go 90 times one and a half, that's where we get this value. Either way, we're going to get the same solution. Because both of these are already in y equals form, a calculator is a quick way to get that point of intersection. So I'm going to go into y equals. I'm going to begin with the first two and enter those two equations. And then I'm going to have to adjust my window. So you might have to play with it a couple of times until you can see where those two lines are in fact crossing. I could still move it up and over a little bit, but that's okay. We're gonna go second function trace. Number five is intersect. We're going to move our cursor. You can hold yours down. We're going to move our cursor. As long as you're in the near vicinity, your calculator is pretty good. So it says, are we on the first curve? Yes. Are we on the second curve? Yes. Do you want me to guess? Yes. And there's our point of intersection. Now I'm going to graph the second one. So I've entered those. I'm going to have to adjust my window a little bit. I'm going to see where those two graphs cross. Again, we're going to go second function trace number five. Uh, move your cursor close, and then we're going to go enter, enter, enter. And you'll notice that one of those coordinates, the y is the same, but the x is slightly different. Here's why. My x coordinate represents time in minutes. So 180 minutes, which is three hours if you divide by 60, after our starting point, which is 1130, they're going to plant the same number of trees, which happens to be 270. So we're going to take that starting point, 1130, we're going to add on 180 minutes, and that puts us at 2.30 p.m. In the second graph, we're starting at 10 o'clock. So 270 minutes after 10 o'clock, divide this by 60, and that's going to be four and a half hours. 
puts us at 2.30 p.m. So we end up with the same solution, but it's really important that you, you understand the process of setting it up and can interpret that solution correctly. In both cases, at 2.30 p.m., they will have planted the same number of trees, 270. In our second example, we have an individual reading a book, and we're given the total number of pages in the book, as well as the total amount of time he spends reading. Pause the video and see if you can come up with two equations that relate these. And I'll give you a hint, if we're given totals, I would start by putting the totals on one side and then trying to build the equation around that. All right, my first total represents the amount of time he spends reading. It's broken into before dinner and then after dinner would be the second category. So I've represented that with my first equation. So time before plus time after equals the five hours in total. And the second total we have is the number of pages in the book. It also gives us his rate at which he reads both before and after dinner. So before dinner, he's reading 50 pages an hour. So in one hour, he will read 50 pages. In two hours, he will read 100 pages pages and so on. And then I also took his rate after dinner and represented that with this term. Now the question doesn't specify how we have to solve it. If it says algebraically we need to do elimination or substitution. So you could rearrange this into either a equals or b equals and graph it or you could also solve it algebraically. Now notice Ultimately, we're trying to figure out the amount of time he spends reading before dinner. So that b is the variable I'm solving for. Knowing that we have a coefficient of 1, I would probably solve by substitution. Because I need that b in my equation, I chose to isolate a so that I can substitute this piece in the second equation in the place of a. So I'm looking for that b variable. If you choose to have a in the equation, it's not the end of the world. You just have to, at the end, make sure you substitute back in here and solve for b. This is just gonna be a little bit faster. Now I have one equation. I've brought them together. It contains one variable. I can go ahead now and algebraically solve for b. We distribute to get rid of those brackets, combine our like terms together and then isolate b. Now b is in hours because back up here remember that this is five hours. So the question specifically wants us to express our answer in hours and minutes. So five thirds of an hour, I know that's the same as one and two thirds. So I have one full hour and then two thirds of an hour. If you take 60 minutes and divide it into thirds, that would be 40 minutes. So we're going to have one hour and 40 minutes. When converting into minutes, it's not always such a nice easy number. So you you can also say, okay, we know we've got at least one full hour, and then knowing that there is one hour contains 60 minutes, we can set up a proportion. So if we take this two-thirds of an hour and multiply by 60, we can also get the minutes that way. Our final question involves investment, where we have an individual with $40,000 to invest, and he's going to invest it into bonds as well as GICs. This is a guaranteed investment certificate. So I've taken his total amount of money, and we're going to put part of it into bonds plus part of it into GICs. Now we're told that the bonds are paying 4.2% interest annually. So that means every year that's the amount he gets paid interest. So I'm changing it to a decimal and multiplying by the bonds to figure out what is 4.2% of the bond money. And then I'm doing the same thing here. I'm saying what is 6% of the GIC money. Together that's going to give me the total amount of interest that I've earned. Now I could solve this by substitution, isolating one of those variables. I'm going to do this one by elimination. There's more than one way you can go about even eliminating a variable, so make it really clear what we're doing. In this case, I subtracted the two systems to eliminate my B, and then I solved for G, so G is $15,000. Now this looks like the easiest equation to substitute into, so I'm gonna take that equation now, and knowing that G is 15,000, we can subtract that from 40,000 to get the value of B. And and then make sure you answer the question with the appropriate units. So because we're dealing with money, we've got a dollar sign in the front here. So this much money into GICs and this much money into bonds.